Hey, it's Gene again. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to install an aluminum window using AMA Method B1. Now, keep in mind that I've tested all the different AMA methods. You've got A and B and A1 and B1. I'm going to tell you that if you're using a weather-resistive barrier like Tyvek, that a B1 method is better than an A1 method. Now, if you've got an architect that wants an A1, fine. I'll show you how to do that in another video. But on this video, we're going to do a B1 method using Tyvek as the WRB. So here it is. Here's how we would do it. Uh, tell us what you think. You can call me anytime, 800-310-7673, or shoot me an email, gene at tlslabs.com. Thank you very much. Hey, it's Gene again. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to install a nail fin window, in this case an aluminum nail fin window, using an AMA Method B1. Now an AMA Method B1 uh, includes what's called a weather resistive barrier, WRB. We're going to use Tyvek, uh, but the methods that you're going to see here would be applicable to any kind of WRB. Now, here's what we truly believe is very important, and that is that if you're using a Tyvek type of house wrap, there needs to be two layers of material. It is very common, coast to coast, for there not to be two layers of material. I think it's a mistake. I think there needs to be two layers. That kind of goes beyond the purview of window installation. However, what we're going to do is show you how to install a window in anticipation of a second layer of Tyvek that's going to be applied, hopefully after you walk away from the window opening. More times than not, you're going to walk up to a window opening if there's a weather-resistive barrier and there's only going to be one layer of material. We're going to show you how to cut that material and we're going to show you how to prepare your opening for a subsequent layer of material that should be applied after you walk away from the rough opening. It's the right way to do it. You know, it's just the right way to do it. So anyway, I hope you get a lot out of this. And it's time to cut our modified eye cut into the rough opening. This is a very simple process. Uh, 45 degree angles over the header down to the start of the rough opening. And then all the way across. What's important and what we find across the country is that the Tyvek somehow or another is drawn into the rough opening at the top and that's wrong. At the very top of this rough opening, the Tyvek should be held up. It should be wrapped in on the sides. And there's actually a method to wrap it in at the bottom as well, although we like this method better. See, we're cutting across, directly across the framing sill, like he's doing right now. We like this better than the method where you cut it uh, higher than the framing sill and roll it onto the framing sill. And if you look on the DuPont website, you'll see an example of that. Uh, although the DuPont folks support this method as well, we prefer this. Let's see what Percy is doing is he's going to temporarily hold this Tyvek up at the top with a piece of Tyvek tape. Once the window and the flashing materials are in installed, that will come back down as one of the final steps of this installation process. Alright, now it's time to pull this into the opening. We'd pull it in nice and tight and pop a couple staples in it, hold it in place. Okay, this is the way the rough opening will probably look when you're ready to install your windows. Either you've prepared it this way, or somebody has prepared it for you. But I'm going to tell you that there needs to be, and you've heard this before, but there needs to be another layer of Tyvek, house wrap, or some other material on top of this. One layer of WRB, in my opinion, is not enough because it doesn't do a good enough job of keeping water out through all the various penetrations that are going to happen to this material. If this material never received a penetration, it will be fine. But it's going to get penetrations from things like lath fasteners, from siding that might get installed, from ladders that you know go up against the side of the building when you're working on two-story construction. So what we're going to do is we're going to start this uh, installation procedure assuming that another layer of material is going to get installed on top of this. That's why what you're going to see us do first is we're going to use a nail-on flashing product and we're going to create a bib. 
for an apron. The bib or the apron is in anticipation of subsequent uh, WRBs or subsequent grade D building paper or subsequent felt that might be applied by probably another contractor. It's not going to be you. It's going to be applied by somebody else. But I want you to give them a condition that they can work with. And that's why we're going to take the following steps. Remember that for your test. There'll be a test on that. Uh, that's why we create a bib or an apron so that another trade can come later and apply another layer of WRB, another layer of grade D building paper, or another layer of felt, something that will go on top of this WRB. Okay, there's two strategies for window installations. You have a barrier method and you have a drainage method. A barrier method of window installation is just fine. It assumes that you're going to seal all four sides of your window and that water is never going to get behind that nail fin into the rough opening. Basically a barrier method does not allow water to escape. A drainage method assumes that there will be some water get into that rough opening and it provides for an escape mechanism, a leapage mechanism. If you're using wood windows or if you're using aluminum windows, we strongly encourage you to use a drainage method which includes a pan system. Vinyl windows really don't leak. <clears throat> they can, they generally don't. If you're using a vinyl window, a barrier method is fine, but I gotta tell you, the industry, our construction industry, is moving towards pan systems under everything. So what we're gonna include here is a pan system. Uh, I think it's a better way to go. It does cost a couple of bucks more. Measure if you've gotta go as cheap as you can go, then use a barrier method, seal all four sides of your nail fin, uh, and you won't need to do this pan. So anyway, here we go. We're going to put in a pan system right now. Know that this is a drainage method. Uh, we think it's a good idea. Um, in the future, maybe we'll include a, a barrier method for you. But for right now, here's a pan system. There's going to be a subsequent layer of house wrap, WRB, applied after this window is installed. But if you think about it, how are you going to tuck it up underneath the window? You don't want a reverse lap, right? We all know what reverse laps are, and we don't want them. So what we're going to do is we're applying a nail-on flashing product underneath our window so that the material, subsequent material done by somebody else at a future date can be tucked up underneath it. You guys with me on that? Now I've done this before where I cut Tyvek. You know how Tyvek comes in large rolls. You can cut a 9-inch roll of Tyvek with a chop saw. Just take your long roll of Tyvek, put it on a, a table, take a chop saw, and chop yourself a 9 or 12 inch roll of it. That works just fine. Or you can take somebody else's nail on flashing, like what we're using is Fortifiber products here. We're using uh, Moist Stop Next, because it's easy and we have it and it's easy to work with, and we're using that as our bib. You just need a high quality nail on bib to put in right now. We're using pan system because our window is going to be an aluminum window. Uh, we believe that all aluminum windows, all wood windows should have pans. Uh, we like pans under vinyl windows as well, but <clears throat> in any event, this is going to be the beginning of our pan system. If it was a barrier, it would look like this. However, if it was a barrier, we would not necessarily take the next steps. Our next steps are going to be corners, flashing corners.